What's up guys, it's DDP. Yes, I know, I am back again. How am I back again? I literally just did the video earlier about my vacation coming up, and I basically said that I wasn't going to be posting anything else before I left. And yet, as that video was uploading, the Cowboys made a surprising move and caught a brother before he could even go on vacation with a new head coach hire. So, what am I to do? Am I going to sit out a week and just not talk about it? No! I would not do that because I'm not yet on vacation. So I'm still here working and grinding for your information and entertainment. Ha! Now, I'm not going to say a whole lot here on Mike McCarthy, but I will give you my quick thoughts on the hire. Uh, Mike McCarthy is the one coach... I know the Cowboys met with Marvin Lewis. It sounds like Jerry directly, though, only met with Mike McCarthy and was so enamored with him in the interview that Mike, as you know, stayed in Dallas. Turns out not just stayed in Dallas overnight for another follow-up interview the next day, he stayed at Jerry Jones' house. And apparently this isn't the first time this has happened in Jerry's tenure, and it's basically said, if you crash at the Jones' house in this situation, Jerry's not going to let you get away. Like, He's got you down. He's got you down. He's not going to let it let his guy get away. So Mike McCarthy, you won Jerry Jones over. Now, Mike's been out of the league for a year, I believe a year, uh, from the Packers following his release after a 12-year coaching career there. He's been to four NFC Championship games. He's won a Super Bowl in his tenure. And it's really impressive what he's been able to do. If you look at some base metrics, you might say, well, how is he that much better than Jason Garrett? Because if you look at the average offensive rating for Mike McCarthy in his coaching tenure, his offenses rank ninth. Jason Garrett ranked 12th in that capacity in his tenures with the Cowboys. Uh, on defense, Mike McCarthy rated 16th overall in the league, whereas Jason Garrett was 15th. Okay, but then people are going to look at it and they're going to say, well, isn't the defense the biggest problem on this team this year? The offense put crazy numbers up for the most part. And it was the defense that we thought was going to be so much better that underperformed. So isn't the offense fine? Shouldn't we have gotten a defensive coach? That's a discussion out there, but defensive head coaches aren't that common anymore. I know the Redskins just hired Ron Rivera. But for the most part, it's the offensive mind that gets, gets the glory at this point in the NFL. And it's interesting to me to look at this hiring for the Cowboys because I see this and say... Well, uh, Mike McCarthy has been the play caller for pretty much his entire coaching career. I think there were a couple of years in Green Bay where he gave it away once in 2015. I forget who he gave it to, but he took it back the next year going into the year and basically said, I'll never make that damn mistake again. So he did not like having someone else call the plays for him. What does that mean for Kellen Moore, our offensive coordinator, who was still under contract? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, also, we still have uh, Colombo for the offensive line. Um, he's still here, so that one's not going to have a clash in that regard, I don't think. But it'll be interesting to see because not often, and I, I warned you the Cowboys would do this, that they would say, you know what, we'll let you pick a lot of your staff, but we are going to have a couple guys, including a coordinator, that you're just going to have to adopt coming in. That gives me pause for concern. But the thing is, I'm not I'm not worried about this because in his year he spent out of the league, Mike McCarthy, I guess there was some series on it and I, I'm going to check into it when I get back from my vacation, but he basically uh, went to what he called the barn and he spent a year basically doing a deep dive analysis of where the league was heading, its trends, what was successful, what wasn't, basically reassessing everything he knew about the NFL today and he basically did it because he wanted to evolve and grow with the ever-changing league now does that sound like something Jason Garrett would do no not even close not even not even close Garrett never alluded you hear that Garrett's hardworking, sure but you never heard Garrett ever acknowledge somewhere where he needed to improve that's just not in his DNA McCarthy he stepped away for a year, and he, it sounds like, did a lot of soul-searching, a lot of homework, 
And yeah, he interviewed with a lot of teams. Everyone's saying, oh, well, Dallas is the first team to look at him. Why is that? He had two interviews with the Panthers already. Yeah, they brought him back for another one. Both of those went well. He interviewed with the Giants. He interviewed with the Browns. And I think there was another team he interviewed for as well. But I can't remember them off the top of my head. The point is, he's he's been interviewed around here but he wanted to see what was going to happen in Dallas. Even a few weeks ago, in a conversation with someone at NFL Network, he basically was asked, what job has your attention the most? And he's like, he basically said, now because of who he said, it alluded to what team, he basically said, the guy I've had my eye on the most over these past few weeks and I've gone back and looked over his last year and a half of growth and development and how the team is using him, is Dak Prescott. So he's had his eye specifically on Dak, and now he meets with the Cowboys, stays at Jerry Jones' house, does a follow-up interview, just basically a continuation of that interview, which you know, obviously, the whole time he was at Jerry's house, they were still talking, whining and dining and all of that, talking football, talking about exactly all the intricacies of how their you know, business relationship would work. And then coming out of it, today, he's already signed the paperwork. It's already a done deal. His press conference will be later this week, so I won't be here for that. Another reason I'm doing this video now. But... Yeah, it's a done deal. He is going to be, he is the next coach of the Dallas Cowboys. And, you know, I, I think it's an upgrade over Garrett. It's it's something to consider because I think McCarthy's always been really good at making in-game adjustments. Garrett's greatest weakness. And I don't think he gets enough credit for it. I was listening to the ticket earlier and Bob Sturm, he was a lifelong Packers fan, you know, from Wisconsin and all that. Uh, he is very familiar with Mike McCarthy. He loves this hire. And he basically said, you know, everyone always likes to give a lot of McCarthy's credit to the fact that he has Aaron Rodgers. Well, Sean Payton has always had Drew Brees. So, you know, keep that in mind. Belichick has always had Brady. Keep that in mind. Well, basically always had Brady. Keep that in mind. But you look at those situations and Stern points to, in 2005, Brett Favre, was on a 4-12 and Packers team, and he looked abysmal, like maybe the worst quarterback in the league, and how he thought he was done. He thought like one of his heroes, sports heroes, was just done. McCarthy came in the next year, and that next year wasn't a whole lot better, but by 2007, the Packers were 12-1. and That was the year the Cowboys beat them at, uh, you know, at home, and then went on to be 13-3, and three, have the number one seed in the NFC. The Packers were the number two seed. But far of that year was magical. If it wasn't for the fact that Tom Brady was doing what he did with the Patriots, you know, that was their 18-0 and 0 year where they lost in the Super Bowl and fell just short of the single greatest sports year ever. Um, it might have been Brett Favre as your MVP, and he would have done it at age 38, and that was McCarthy that fixed him. McCarthy fixed him. And he took a bad Packers team and turned them into a damn near Super Bowl team. They lost in overtime, I believe, to the Giants in the NFC Championship game that year. Uh, so, yeah, you, you could say he was that close to a fifth NFC title game appearance. Garrett has never gotten us past the divisional. So there's something there. Uh, if you want to talk about like, oh, well, I always wanted Sean Payton. McCarthy's stats are almost exact to Sean Payton pretty much the same or even a little better in most regards so that's something to consider there as well this is a guy who knows how to get the job done do is he the sexiest hire you could have no I think people would have been more enamored with an Urban Meyer or a Lincoln Riley but Jerry Jones made clear he doesn't you know, he, he understands he gave Jason Garrett way too much time to grow into the job and then a lot of leash even after he got it because Jerry wanted it to work. Jerry Jones is looking at the window for this team, this roster, and he's understanding their best chances in terms of the, the years of cheap-ass money for Dak are over. Zeke's extension kicks in soon. They're going to have to pay Dak, and I don't think they're going to franchise him. By the way, McCarthy's comments earlier about how Dak is why a big part of why he chose the Cowboys and why he wanted this job, that tells me Dak's getting paid. He's not getting franchised this year. That's just my, my guess and prediction. But with all of that considered, 
that that's a really interesting dynamic to me. I really think that this is I damn it, I, I lost my train of thought there. I took a segue and I stepped off the road and then when I turned back I couldn't see it again. Um I, I think this is a, a quality ad. It's not a sexy ad, but Jerry doesn't have the patience uh for that. He's not he wasn't going to hire a college coach and wait a year or something for them to step into it because there, there it is. I found it because they need to win now with the roster they have constructed because there's a finite window for how long they can do it with the kind of money they've had to invest in some of these parts now. Because of that, it was always going to be an established NFL guy and McCarthy of those, I think was probably the best pick you could get. That's my, that's my assessment on it. Now, We'll see what he ends up doing defensively. The word is early on that he's looking at uh, Mike Nolan, uh, former 49ers head coach. He's right now the linebackers coach with the Saints. That would be a quality hire there. Uh, we know some guys just aren't good head coaches in this league, but they make for great coordinators. Hey, former Cowboys head coach Wade Phillips, perfect example of that. Fantastic defensive mind, not a good head coach. Um, an okay, but not good head coach. Um, then you look at uh, Philadelphia's defensive coordinator Schwartz. Uh, terrible head coach, very, very good, not a great, but a very good defensive coordinator with the Eagles now. That's that's what you've got. Like You've got guys like that that can work, and I think Carroll, or excuse me, uh, Mike Nolan is another example of a guy like that. So if that's who they go with for defensive coordinator, I'm intrigued. I am. How this team rebuilds its defense, I will be very curious to see, but I'm... I'm cautiously optimistic. Now, I'm not jumping on the bandwagon and like, all right, here we go. But yeah, there's there's something to consider there. Oh, and people also, you know, like I said, I mentioned, uh, they all want to give all the credit in the world to uh, Rodgers for anything McCarthy did. Well, McCarthy fixed Brett Favre and nearly got them there to the NFC, or got them to a Super Bowl without, uh, even without Rodgers. And Bob Sturm also pointed out in the 2013 season, uh, they lost Aaron Rodgers to a broken clavicle for half the season. And even though the Packers lost some games in that stretch, with Matt Flynn, they held on. They hung around, and it culminated, not culminated, but in that, you had a game in AT&T Stadium where the Cowboys were up 26-3 at half. They would go on to lose that game because McCarthy coached a brilliant game and with Matt freaking Flynn came all the way back to upset the Cowboys in the second half. Now that was during obviously the last eight and eight year for the Cowboys when we were just in a horrible way of brutality, horrible middling mediocrity and, but McCarthy deserves a lot of credit for that. Now they would go on to get Rogers back in the season finale he came back because it was a win and win the division game in in uh, Soldier Field against Brandon Marshall, Jay Cutler, and Alshon Dre- Jeffrey of the Bears, and they won. Aaron Rodgers came back and won the game. Packers won the division, and a lot of that credit goes to Aaron Rodgers. They just see the final result and say, hey, Rodgers came back and saved the season. Nah, man, you got to give McCarthy a hell of a lot of credit for losing uh, not just any guy. He lost Aaron freaking Rodgers and still was able to navigate that team to stay afloat. If nothing else, just stay afloat until he got his guy back and made that a playoff year. When they had the Cowboys, think about that. Think about the adaptability of that. If Jason Garrett has lost anything of any significance, even for a short spell, he has fallen apart for the most part throughout his tenure. We, we have an injury to Cooper against the Jets. Oh, well, I mean, that's why we lost the Jets game. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, Zeke suspended six games. Well, we can't really do a whole lot to work around that. We stayed afloat just long enough for him to get back just to then fall flat on our face. Cool. Like, that's the kind of shit that you get under Garrett. Meanwhile, the Eagles, for their credit, they lost, the year they won the Super Bowl, they lost their quarterback, their left tackle, their middle linebacker. It didn't matter. It did not matter. They adapted, and Garrett always talked next man up. Well, that's empty garbage if you can't actually coach him up, and you adapt to deal with it. 
These other teams do it. The Eagles even lost Wentz in the playoff game, and they still only lost, what was it, 17-9? Is that what the final was? They might have gotten even closer. I know they got down to the Seattle 10 at the very end of the game, but yeah, it, it's just crazy looking at this, what you should be able to get out of out of these teams. Yeah, 17-9. What you should be able to get out of these teams, Garrett has not shown that adaptability and the ability to make adjustments. McCarthy can. He's got a long tenure of that. And, you know, not to bring up bad memories, but his late game challenge uh, win percentage is crazy high. For Cowboys, the most notorious example of this was the Dez Caught It game. Uh, McCarthy challenged that, and he won. Now, you could say it was the wrong call, and I agree with you, but... McCarthy knew, hey man, by the letter of the law as it's written, that's that's a good chance we can get that back. He threw the flag and it screwed us over. And hey, he beat our ass in 2016 too. I mean, McCarthy, McCarthy is a good coach. I really believe that. I think it's a step up from Garrett. I, I, I think in terms of your average offensive versus defensive ranks, it's a slight upgrade. But I think in terms of your in-game management, it's a substantial upgrade. And I'll be curious to see how they fill out the rest of the staff. So that's my quick takeaway on this. I'm very intrigued by, by the hiring. I'm surprised it came so soon. Like I said, not even a full 24 hours after Garrett was officially uh, not released, just not retained because he was a free agent at this point. I'll be curious if they are going to actually do what it sounds like they are and keep Kellen Moore and keep Colombo. Um just because it's unusual. Most teams don't do that to their coach, their new incoming coach. Say, all right, you got to keep these guys, including this coordinator. And because of how McCarthy has always called plays and preferred to be the one calling plays, what does that mean for Kellen Moore? It almost doesn't, it seems like it's not going to work at all. So I don't know. We'll see. But that's going to do it for my time, guys. Don't forget to leave a like, uh, leave a comment below as well. Subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. Check out the shirts on represent.com. And until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute. For real though, this is seriously my last video before vacation. For real, for real.